Hello friends, welcome to Village Idiots Christ, where we're nuts for Jesus and just plain nuts. This is a special video tonight, it's called, Have You Been Left Behind? And it's part one, Where Did Everyone Go? This video is being filmed on September 17th, 2024. For those of you watching this at the present time, this is a message left behind us once the rapture takes place. For those of you in the future, you're watching this now and you're afraid. Suddenly, without warning, millions of people worldwide have vanished in an instant. Moments later, cars began crashing, planes fell out of the sky, suicides are at an all-time high, and the whole world is in complete chaos. Fear and dread are everywhere. If this is the world you find yourself in right now, then my friends, you've been left behind. If the reasons for these disappearances have not begun yet, here's some of what you may hear. This is a worldwide alien abduction, or a cosmic cleansing, or a sudden jump in evolution where for some reason many people have been taken away, or a dozen or, or, a dozen or more other reasons people have come up with in all their fear. None of these are true. What you've just experienced is the rapture or removal of all Christians from the earth and quite possibly every child worldwide. They've been taken to heaven by Jesus Christ. Now before you turn me off or just think I'm some kind of religious nut, I want you to consider the fact that this video was made before this removal of Christians happened. Again, this video was filmed September 17, 2024. So if this is years in the future or months in the future, then I'm speaking to you right now. This is a message in a bottle we left for you if you're experiencing this time of great trouble. Um, so again, we want you to understand the times you're living in, and that's what these videos are. There's three videos, and that's what this is. Now, this event that you just went through was predicted in the Bible 2,000 years ago before it happened. Really consider what I'm about to tell you. God knows everything in advance, and his warning about this event was right before your eyes. We want you, uh, what we want you to do now is to give, um, what we want to do now is give you right out of the Bible seven sets of scripture that fully explain what has happened to the world you find yourself in. We're going to read and explain these verses to you because Bibles will soon be outlawed and most likely burned. We encourage you, if possible, to find a Bible and begin reading in the Gospel of John first and then second in the Book of Romans. This will tell you who Jesus is and will explain Christianity to you in detail. The verses we are about to begin are a detailed explanation of the disappearance of so many people worldwide. We also have two other videos uh, that will be coming out in the next two days. Uh, one will be explaining who Jesus is, and the others are things that are, are going to happen shortly on the, on the earth that you find yourself on right now. These will have the same title, but will be part two and part three. Part two will be, uh, it's all about Jesus, and part three will, will be things to come. Know that our prayers and our love are with you. Remember that it's not too late. And that there's still hope, even if you've been left behind. Let's begin in the Bible now. The first scripture is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18. And remember, I'm going to verbatim quoting, I'm going to read right from these scriptures, so, you, so you'll be able to hear exactly where we're coming from. Here's 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18. This is right out of the Bible. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, first, what we see happening is that Jesus is coming down from heaven to meet us. Some erroneously believe that this is his second coming when he returns to the earth. But it doesn't say that. It says that he is coming down to meet us in the sky or in the air. It never says at this point that he touches down on earth. It says that those who are dead already rise first. In other words, those people as Christians that died, you know, it's natural death, that they're the first ones to be taken up. 
Then it says that we who are still alive are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, not on the ground, but in the air. Then it says that we will be with the Lord forever. Just imagine the unimaginable power and love of God who not only wrote about these events in advance, but who now, right before your eyes, has brought all of it to pass. He's pretty amazing, isn't he? And, just, and that's just the first of seven scriptures we're going to read. Let me get a drink of water here. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little cold going on. And by the way, you ever, <laughs> you ever feel like somebody's looking over your shoulder? <laughs> oh, those are three of my favorite pictures. I love those pictures, especially the chickens. My wife used to raise chickens. Those guys are just cool. Love that chicken picture. A chihuahua and then a cat. Amen. The second scripture. Let's get right back into it. Hey, hey, I want you. I'm, you know, I won't want you to think I'm some stuff. Sure, I'm a guy in a Hawaiian shirt, uh, ex truck driver, telling you about Jesus and about the scriptures about the rapture. So hey, I, <laughs> I am not a theologian. I'm just a guy who's into the Bible and wants to share the truth with you. So you'll be okay. The second scripture is First Corinthians fifteen fifty through fifty two. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. For these mortal bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. What will last forever. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died already will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will be transformed. Amen. Our earthly bodies, this body here, I, I can't inherit the kingdom of God with my physical body. That is why he must transform us first. We will have similar, we'll have the same kind of bodies or similar bodies that Jesus had after his resurrection. He had a physical form that could touch him. He told Thomas, you know, put your hands in my, and put your fingers in the nail marks, put your hand in my side. Jesus had a physical glorified body, not bound by time or space. He could just suddenly just appear and disappear just like this. No, no, um, no, he's, he, he, is, he is beyond time and space. And he could also eat. He ate with them. So it was a fit. He wasn't just a, a ghost or something like that. He had physical form. And that's the same kind of glorified body we're going to have with him. Physical substance, again, physical substance without physical limitations. Isn't that cool? Uh, and, and then we have a second biblical witness that those who are already in dead, that de the, the dead, this is the second biblical witness that the dead rise first. And then we who are still alive are transformed. So we have two witnesses right there of the dead in Christ. Those in the ground, those who have died or been cremated, whatever, rising first. Amen. And transformation and removal is what the rapture is all about. Why is there a rapture? For those of us still on, well, for us to meet Christ in the air, but for us to be transformed. And again, those in the ground, the dead are being transformed as well. They're getting their bodies back. They could have been dead for a thousand years 2,000 years, and they, they get their whole body back, but it be glorified body. The third scripture is, is John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, when everything is ready, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you will be with me always where I am. Let's read that again. It's short, so let's read it again. And if I go and prepare a place for you, that's Jesus leaving the first time, when everything is ready, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you will always be with me where I am. Where is Jesus right now? He's in heaven. And as you have seen, everything was made ready. When everything is made ready, he is coming back to take us to be where he is. Amen. It's really just that simple. He's preparing a place for us right now, has been for 2,000 years. And when his father says, go. He'll go. Even Jesus says, I don't even know the day or the hour. Only the Father does. So one day the Father's going to look at Jesus and say, go get him. And that's when he's going to come and get us. But right now he's preparing a place for us, for, the, for his bride, for, his, for God's children. He's preparing a place for us. Again, we're his bride. We're the bride of Christ. We're the children of God. He's preparing a place for us right now. He loves us. and Why? Because he loves us and wants us to be with him forever. Amen. And you wonder why we love him so? I mean, he's about up there for two. Can you imagine the place he's prepared for us? Amazing, truly amazing. The fourth scripture is 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. 
For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so until he's taken out of the way. Some people have wrongly surmised that it is the Holy Spirit that's been taken out of the way, but that's impossible. The Holy Spirit, like the Father and the Son, is omnipresent, or present everywhere all at the same time. So there's nowhere that he isn't. So what must be removed? The body of Christ from the earth. Why? Because we are the light of the world, exposing its darkness, and we are the salt of the earth, preserving those things that are right. So once we're taken away, it will give darkness an opportunity to fully manifest on earth. Then, uh, when that happens, the tribulation will begin. We'll cover that in more detail later on. So again, we see a fourth scriptural declaration that we must be removed. And that's just what has happened to you. We've been taken away. The fifth scripture is Revelation 3.10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. A truly amazing promise. For the faithful in Christ, the promise is that we are going to be kept from the trial or tribulation period that is going to come upon the whole world. The reason we know that this is the tribulation period is because there has never been a trial in the history of the world. There has never been a trial that affected the whole world. Not ever. Only the tribulation does that. And we are promised to be spared of the trouble coming. And that protection, and that protection is the rapture. The sixth scripture is, oh, I didn't write it down. Oh, <laughs> that's pitiful. Well, I'm going to quote you the sixth scripture. I forgot to write. See, I'm not perfect, and I don't do editing. So, so, and he will, he will send it. <laughs> If you've still got Google, you can look this up. Again, the sixth scripture is, I didn't even write, let me see, uh, I, I, I was going to go to the seventh, let me see if I wrote the seventh one down. Hopefully I wrote the seventh one down. <laughs> Again, and uh, the sixth scripture is, whatever it is, <laughs> he will send his angels with a loud, loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. Now, I think this is Matthew, but I'm not positive. Now, this one's a little, and this one's a little tricky. Some people think that this is the second coming of Christ back to earth. But what makes it interesting is there's a trumpet call and a gathering of his people that lends itself to the idea that this is the rapture. Whether it is the rapture or the second coming of Christ, it still shows us how he cares for his own. And finally, the seventh scripture, Luke 17, 34 and 35. I tell you that on that night, people, two people will be in one bed, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and one will be left. And now again, now this is, is this tricky as well. So we're just, again, these last two, we're not perfect. We're not perfectly positive of, but they're still interesting to look at. Some see this as a rapture scripture and others see it as final, final judgment from God. Whichever it is, we again see the supernatural. Now again, this is still, let, listen, we again are seeing the supernatural power and ability of God to step into our physical reality and do whatever he wants to do, including the removal of folks from the earth. Somehow, some way, this is a removal, whether it's the rapture or not, but we still see the evidence of God's amazing power over creation, over his people, to just to do what he wants to do in his sovereign will. So, so this again, this is whether this is the rapture or not, it's still impressive what God can do. The unlimited power of God. It truly, he is, truly is unlimited in his power. Now we have shown you seven sets of scripture. Five of them are direct and right on point with the rapture, and the last two are definitely a possibility. What we want you to see is that since the beginning, God has been planning this supernatural event for the benefit of his faithful believers and his son. For you left behind, the rapture has become one of God's greatest supernatural signs ever that he's in control and that he loves you. You know that he loves you because now you have a second chance to get right with God through his son, Jesus Christ. We encourage you to repent and receive him as Savior and Lord. All you need to know is written in the Gospel of John and the Book of Romans. In case you can't get a Bible, our second video is all about Jesus Christ. 
Everything you know, need to know about him and salvation through him is in that video. We encourage you to watch it carefully and to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. In the meantime, humble yourself before God. Pray and ask him for the help you need. Our final video, Things to Come, will better explain the times you're living in now and what to expect next. Just remember that God loves you, that his son died for you, and that that what he wants is you and your love. What, what does God really want? He wants you and he wants your love. He loves you so much he wants to be with you forever and he wants your un, undivided, un, un, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the un thing, I shouldn't be doing it. He wants you and he wants your love. Let's keep it simple. He wants you and your love. Amen. It really is that simple. We hope to see you in the next video. We love you and so does he. Shalom, shalom, or perfect peace. Love you. See you tomorrow. Part two tomorrow.